Pipe bomb time. We got to drop the pipe bomb tonight. Come on, man. It's always pipe bomb time when I'm in the room, man. There we go, man. So tomorrow, um, tomorrow, Friday, you got the new project that's coming out. Um, I've been listening to it. I got the early preview. Thank goodness I, I, I get some access to these guys where they let me listen to the project early. Um, tell them the title, bro. THC2, the Hustlers Catalog 2 for all the uh, Die Hard Smoke Dizzle fans that um, was with me on THC, the original THC. This is the sequel, the Hustlers Catalog 2. You know what I mean? New updated uh, baby profile. You know what I mean? I got my I got my old Earths on there with me. Got my parents on the cover with me. So you know, it's a good time. So you this this one joins the ranks of, you know, you remember back in the days where you saw Michael Jackson on Thriller where he was laid back, or you saw Lionel Richie on the cover of his album. I think the the cover was was um all night long on all of that where he was just kind of laid back in his pose and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> um Teddy Pendergrass did that. Right. So you knew when when an artist dropped that and they had the pose where they was just laid. You know it's about to be this. some smooth. It's about to be some smoothness. Yeah, but you know it's gonna be fire too. You know what I'm saying? So fact. now when we see the younger version of the artist on the cover, where we see the baby picture, that's the new. That's the that's new that. exactly. You know what I'm saying? That's that. Die, like that. Oh, that, that that's, that's, that's a good. That's a good analogy. I like this that. Is a lot. This like is that it. I like that a lot. This is it. Yeah, first that's, joint. That's my first, Teddy P pose. That's the Teddy P pose. Yeah. First joint, big stepper. My goodness. Big big stepper got two far holes. Got two. Got two on rows. Got two on froze. Um, that's me. West Side Gun and Currency, um, mm. you know, two of two uh two of my best friends in the business. You know I mean, I got them on the same record. What's uh, what's that like? Are you do, um? I mean, COVID is still going on. Some people are outside. Some people are in the house. Did you guys send the files back, or were you able to come together to make it? I ain't seen Franklin. I ain't seen Spitter in about a year. As far as like physically, I talk to him on Facetime all the time. Um, West Side, he's frequently at my crib. Anytime he come to New York, he stopped by my crib right from the airport. So I had him actually come record in this room right here because you know since since quarantine, made by quarantine, everybody had to step their game up. You know what I mean? So I got my own setup and shit. Been recording myself, you know, um, recording my podcast. I had to put a different hat on, get some mm -hmm. for my resume as far as you know, engineering my own shit and learning how that works and you know making the shit sound good. I still can't mix. Shout out to Static Selector. Shout out to Trigger. You know what I mean those are my guys that mix my shit. But um, I just been recording my own shit. So yeah, uh, Wes came to the crib. He's been. I see Wes all the time. I was just with him last week. Actually, we ran into you last time we was together at the um. Yeah, DMX. Swiss Beats, yeah. DMX listening. Yeah, Westside, yeah, Westside said on, on the record, he said, sometimes I want the July, sometimes I want the child. <laughs> yeah, I mean. And uh, if you live in New York, are you, you in the New York nightlife, you know that's pretty accurate. Very accurate. You know that's accurate. You know what I mean? I, 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 spots. Yeah, I, I, very, man. You know, I, I think Julan is more on the low. It ain't on the low no more, but Julan used to be more on the low. It used to be on the low until us rappers fucked it up. Yeah. But yeah. still, still in all, I love both establishments. I just like Philippe a little more, food-wise. You know what I mean? Like, some people like, like, shout out to K. Slay. K. Slay like Mr. Childs more than he like Philippe. I like Philippe more than I like Mr. Childs and Julan. So, but I like Julan's ambiance more. You know what I mean? Yeah, because outside, go outside, go outside, and I could, you know, shout out to the homies over there. I could be smoke dizzle. You know what I mean? So they let me smoke dizzle over there. So you know, that's how they get me in the building. But I could smoke dizzle in Philippe too, and yeah. you know, I don't smoke dizzle in, in the cellar, in the wine cellar, in Philippe. 
many times, but you know. Oh, that that uh that cellar is 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 gully. You see a lot of a lot of people in that cellar, man. It's immaculate. Yeah. You know what I mean? We get the room to ourselves, uh take over the TV, take over the music, you know what I mean? Just me and the homies, we just be in there, just us and the server. Do you remember now? I'm gonna take I'm gonna take you back about 10 years. Do you remember what they tried to do for Leaps Express? Of course, on like 14th Street. Yes, that's, that, that's where homie shot himself. I know, I remember. I ain't new to this. I'm true to this, man. Yeah. We real New York niggas, shot. Come, come on, on come on, on y'all already know. know man. That's that's why we the tag team champions. Come that's on, why we man. Get you you on, man. Put on the ropes. I hit the clothesline, man. There you go. Come you on. know, and, and and we jumping them backstage, and they, they gotta call the camera thing. crew. They don't even make it to the ring. They don't make it to the ring. They don't, man. This album we, we was talking before um you know we we started the interview is just um it's it's a lot of melody but it's it's dope though. You know what I'm saying? It's not like it's not soft. We we still getting it. We just getting a different chamber. What what made you decide to go into that? I mean, you know, I make mood music. So, you know, my and, and not only mood music, I make lifestyle music. So, it's how I'm feeling. So um, I can't I can't sit here and act like that's my only project that I've been working on because I have at least four or five projects that I'm looking at right now in my folder on my in my iTunes playlist. But um, you know that's one of the projects that's coming off my tarmac right now. That's coming off the runway. So it's you know it's just a vibe. Like at this point. I was playing the record for one of my homies the other day and he pointed out, he's like, man, it don't sound like you rapping to um, try, not to try to be the best, but I'm not rapping to prove a point that I'm better than niggas. You feel me? I'm just making music. Like I'm not focused on nobody else plate. I don't care who ain't finished they plate. I don't care who finished they plate. I'm just doing what I do. And I'm just making music for the moods that I be in. I'm making music for niggas that wear $500 cologne. You know what I mean? I'm making music for niggas that eat good like us. I'm making music for niggas that fly first class. Like I'm making music for niggas that's, you know, riding around, getting to it. You know what I mean? So yeah. different moods for that. And I make music for girls, you know, girls, girls like my shit. You know what I mean? And I got to give them something that they can enjoy in their palate instead of always giving them, you know, the, the boom bap, the hard shit, the gully shit. Sometimes you got to, you know, give them something that they could enjoy, even though they like that shit, too. But they also yeah. they also like to smooth it out. You know, you know, what's so, so dope about you, man. You, you came into the you came into the game at a point. This is uh, this is 10 years ago. Um, well, I really start to hear about you. Um, this is this is at a point where there was being an independent guy wasn't always the coolest thing. Everybody was coming in the game trying to get the big uh papoose deal, you know, the big yeah, they was trying to get it. Being independent wasn't really the, the coolest thing, and you're one of the guys, um. Along with currency, even though I know currency had Atlantic, but currency, he always moved independently and always did things his way. One of the guys that was able to a make great music, make great money, and tour. I'm not gonna lie, he's Yoda for me. <laughs> <clears throat> He's somebody that's not only my peer, but somebody I look up to. Um, as as a as an artist, a friend, a brother, he been there for me through it all. And we was in the mud together, like before before he did any partnerships with any major situations. I remember when he signed on the dotted, and I got the text like, "It's on." You know what I mean? But um. Like you said, being being an independent guy wasn't always the cool thing until not only did we make it cool, but we had success to add to it. So, you know, it was a point where you had to have a deal in order to or had to spend a lot of money in order to have records with a lot of major artists or for a major artist to even want to work with you. 
Right. You know what I mean? And I feel like we cracked that code because I've never signed the major record deal in my life. And I've only worked with major artists. You know what I mean? Obviously, I work with underground artists, too. And a lot of us came up in the underground together before they got there, like the Action Bronsons, the Kendricks, the Ab Souls, you know what I mean? The Spitters, um, the Big Crits of the world. You know what I mean? Like, they all my peers. We all was pretty much in the same class, if not the same class, the same school at the same time. So, um, you know, we made independent look good. We was actually touring off our mixtapes. That was some shit that, you know, only nigga that I knew was doing that was 50. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know if he had the Interscope situation when he was busting the road down, killing it off the mixtapes. Like, we actually toured off our mixtapes. You know what I mean? Our mixtapes got upstream to being albums. I feel like we started the whole, you know, at first a mixtape used to be rapping over other people's instrumentals. Before we started monetizing off it, we was dropping our mixtapes with original music on that pith. So, you know, we kind of changed the whole structure for how that shit looked, too. You well, I mean? also, too, don't, don't forget, um, you're speaking of changing structure to build on that. It was the shift from, it was still physical. It was, it was still physical CDs, but it CDs was starting to move cool. digital. It was starting yeah, to do streaming. I remember was on the forefront. Right. I remember having a conversation with um with an ind with an independent distributor, and he was worried because CDs were about to be extinct, but not more so worried that the CDs would be extinct, but just didn't know the trajectory of what streaming would be like. Right. Right. So you're right. We did watch the whole traditional way of you know consuming music change. You know what I mean? Because at first, fucking what was the name of that shit? LimeWire? And, and yeah, like, Lime you, know, Wire, you know what I mean? Shit like that. That yeah. was kind of before. You had to have a computer to do that. Niggas in the inner cities didn't really have computers or the internet like that. Or we were working on dial up. You know what I mean? AOL online and shit. So I had to go on there at nighttime and get on hip hop game and get on these sites to see what's going on because I was in a know. A lot of people didn't know about that until the world star hip hop started to come about you know what i mean so it's it's a lot of shit that we've seen a lot of changes and a lot of transitions since we've been in this shit so i'm, I'm just blessed to still be here man you know